Welcome to the Faith Lutheran Church Bible Study for Wednesday, May 16th, 2018. In the first half of tonight's study on Luther's Large Catechism, Pastor Ernie Jung leads us as we discuss the first petition of the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed be thy name. Let's listen in. Uh, as we continue today, uh, we are on uh, the first petition of the Lord's Prayer, and uh, why don't we, uh, why don't we begin uh, with prayer? Dearly Father, we uh, we thank you for this day, oh Lord, uh, that you have brought us to this time, Lord. We just thank you that uh, you have given us this prayer life, as we are continually humbled, but yet exalted by your promises, uh, knowing full well that you bring and you deliver us. Uh, from the power of sin and death, and that you have given us eternal life and salvation, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, bless us as, at this time as we uh, learn what it means to be living in your name and uh, trusting that your kingdom will come. Uh, bless us uh, with this faith as we learn and um, have great joy in all that you give. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. Uh, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so uh, now why don't we begin uh, with uh, Luke chapter 18, if we could uh, turn to that, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14, and when we talk about the name, the name in which we live, it's very important to know the name. Now, I know your names, your names, right? I don't know what they mean, per se, like I don't know what... Your name means, does it have a meaning, your name? Yeah. Uh, I have a thing that says it, but I don't know. <laughs> Sheldon, do you know what? I have no idea. Oh, um, really? You don't know the the definition of your name? I don't. Oh, interesting. They're out there. They're there to know the definition. Just Google uh, your name and then definition, and it'll come does up. Does it really matter? It's almost like looking at your horoscope. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Uh, I know my name means um, pastor. Honesty, right? <laughs> Earnest. Earnest right? means honesty. Like you know, you could hear that's a. Sometimes you hear like, "Oh, you're very earnest oh, in your." Sure. Uh, sometimes they use e a r n e s t, but mine's just an e r n e s t. But names are important, right? A name. Whose name do we live under? Right. Right. Whose name? Now Christ. this is Christ. Oh, Christ! Yes. The name above all names. Yes, um, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Right. Whose name do we live under? And this is very important because the Enoma, or the name, as we see right here, is uh, though we know, and Sheldon, you're right. Always, you know, uh, forever, it is it is Christ. But yet. Uh, at times, what does our sinful nature say about the name? Right? Like, I'm the, I'm the name above all names. When I want to take control. Or when I want the power. Or I live by my name because I am so talented. Or I am so smart. Right? Um, I can do this myself. You know what happens when that happens? I do. God, God finds a way to humble you. Again... We'll get to what it means to humble and to be exalted, but that's what we're facing here in our flesh. And we're all, we all know that, right? We, we all know the law shows us, uh, first commandment, you shall have no other God. Second commandment, do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, right? Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, right? So when we talk about names, uh, this is very important because you're right. We live in the name of Christ. He has brought us into his grace. But yet at the same time, if we really want to look in the mirror, Right? Uh, there are times when uh, simply we, we love our name so much that we want to live under our own name. Right? So this prayer really gets us back to who we are and what name we live under. And that's why the prayer life is so important because if we stop praying, and if we stop praying the Lord's Prayer, let's say, man, our sinful flesh can definitely go the other way, right? To, to the other names of the world. And that is the idol that we face, right? And usually it's it's ourselves. So the name, what is this all? Why don't we read Luke 18 and uh, the, the parable right here? Um, so could read sure. that for me. I could. Go ahead. 
Uh, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to, te to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like the other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. If I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. All right, so he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous, right? So based on Luke 18, what do we see right here with the name? Right? Who was he facing here in the parable? We have someone who is, uh, we have someone who is very uh, confident, right? In his works. Yes. In his works, right? The Pharisee. Uh, we have the tax collector, who is, we'll talk about this later, but uh, when we talk about the names, what name are they trusting? Right? This is the bottom line. What name do they cling to? Now, the Pharisee, uh, what is the, the, the issue here? We see it. I mean, the reason why this parable is given is because those who trust themselves to be uh, their own righteousness, right? Uh, verse 11, the Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, uh, prayed thus, uh, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. Um, when it comes to salvation, what is the Pharisee trying to say about what he's done? When it comes to what uh, his name, that his name is great. Why? Because he... What, what subject is used to show what he has done? Subject verb, it is... Works. He's boasting in his works. He said I, right? If you look at it, I, 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 I. Oh, that's right. Right, I, I, I. Uh, what, what is another story in the Bible about wanting to make your name great? What did they do to make a name for themselves? Uh, it's called the Tower of Babel, right? where they tried to make a name for themselves and uh, they wanted to, uh, to uh, reach the heavens uh, to show everyone how great they were, but yet the Lord, he dispersed them, scattered them, changed the languages so they, they could never do that again. Again, this is uh, because they thought their name was so great. The Pharisee thought in his own righteousness that he was better than the extortioner, the unjust, even that tax collector right there, right? It was like... It's like he's showing us, my name is great. I, I, I could do this, right? I, I am righteous because of, of what I tithe. I, I fast. I'm not like them. Right? So clearly we see the name in which uh, the Pharisee is being led by, and that is himself, as if he has such the puffed up pride to actually fulfill and to say, like, I am better than them by my own name. And the Pharisee is definitely crediting himself to all that he has done. Now, what does, conversely, right, contrast, contrastly, a word, uh, the tax collector says what? Tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast saying, God, I don't know if he did that. But. Have mercy on me, yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where is he, what is he saying right there? God, be, comparing and contrasting what the Pharisee said versus what the tax collector said, God be merciful to me, right? A sinner. So what, what is the difference here between these two people? What name are they addressing and what name are they clinging to? The tax collector knows his his sin, and he he's not on the same level as uh, God. 
Pharisees seem to think that, um, hey, God, look at this. I'm doing so great. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and that's right. You know, when, when the tax collector says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, he's not looking at himself at all. He's actually... He's, he's, like, he's, he's clinging to God saying, yeah. you know, you're the one who gives me all that I have. Your name is above all names. Your name lavishes me with your riches of grace. I can't bring that to the table. Um, I don't know why I'm getting so into it right now. But anyway, the point is, is that it's so important to see this because uh, when we have that identity crisis spiritually, right? right? Wondering who am I, who am I, who am I? Uh, we are this tax collector. That's what we should be. God be merciful to me a sinner because I need your name. My name brings nothing to the table. I might have this resume long list of what I've done in my life, but in terms of my salvation and being what? The J word, right? Justified. Uh, in terms of being justified, I am only justified by the name above all names, and that's Jesus Christ, as you said earlier, right? So when we talk about the name, uh, we very well know that uh, the name is very important and to know the name in which we live under and how we got under that name is just as important, right? Um, and that really brings out what this first petition is all about. Um, we see right there in scripture at the end, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. What does that mean right there? When we talk about the, the rhythm of humbled and exalted versus what? Exalted, then humbled. What, what is the, uh, how does that work here when we talk about uh, being humbled? Whoever is uh, humbled will be exalted. Whoever is exalted will be humbled. Who needs to be humbled here out of these two? The first. Yes, good. This, this point in here. Who is already humbled? The tax collector, right? So we see clearly that uh, the tax collector is humbled, and therefore he is uh, confessing his sins, and he is exalted by the justification of Christ on the cross for the, for, for, for the work uh, that uh, he will do. And, and therefore, when we talk about the Pharisee, he, is, he believes that he is exalted above everyone else, but he needs to be crushed, right? And that's what the law does. It primarily crushes us. And uh, it brings us to our knees, just like the tax collector, right? Well, he, need, he needs to be humbled, not crushed. He needs to be put in his place so he can get back on the path. It says here, i got a footnote, the tax collector's prayer should be our prayer because all we need is God's mercy every day. And don't let pride in your achievements cut you off from God, which the Pharisees did. Which he, uh, that pride and achievement is that exalted, puffed up pride. Uh, I'm, I'm better than you. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. So not, no, I know. <laughs> right. Dude, um, it happens all the time. The, the minute, if I, if I boast at work in anything, would, if, if I do, and I have in the past, the Lord will send me a comeback. Like, you know, next thing you know, the boss is coming up. Dude, check in your life on. You just repaired this car last week. And then I, okay, see, I just boasted. <laughs> well, the, Lord, the Lord said, show no boasting. Here's a, here's a check into my, you just worked on this car. <laughs> well, maybe you just didn't catch That's it. the way I look at it, though. You not, It's not okay to be prideful. And when you are, because all gifts are from God. Everything I do every day is from God. So the minute I, I pride myself in what I do, the Lord takes me down a notch just like that. And I believe it. I, do, I truly believe that. Um, but when we talk about uh, humble and exalted, uh, what does that, how does a prayer life fit into that? When we talk about, do you think, um, do you think exalted people who are already puffed up in pride, like this Pharisee who is so righteous in himself, right, trusting in his own righteousness, um, uh, what, uh, when we talk about prayer, I'm trying to coin this correctly so I don't sound weird, which I always do sometimes, which I always do sometimes, does that make sense? Uh, but, uh, what does prayer usually do? It, um, 
Well, it does both, right? It, it just depends on the person. But uh, definitely prayer definitely will humble people. But yet, I think in the exalted state of mankind, I think a lot of times in their own, in their own power, they won't go to prayer. They'll say, I know my name, and I'm strong, and I don't need prayer. I can do this myself. Now, the humbled person in this faith that is knowing of their sin and knowing that they fall short of the glory of God, we have no choice but to get on our knees and pray because um, nothing in ourselves um, can we very well know can save us. That we need the name outside of ourselves to deliver us from the domain of the darkness into the marvelous light. Right, so that prayer life is very... Uh, It's there the humbled are exalted. It's there we know in prayer life that um, whatever we have uh, does not compare to what God gives by his word and the promise that we have in prayer. We are uh, clinging to the Father because we very well know uh, we, we cannot live by our own names. And that is uh, the prayer life for you. It's to know that you need the Father's name to guide, lead, defend protect, to be your mighty refuge, to be the shadow of, uh, under your, um, as you are the shadow under his wing, or you are under his shadow of his wing. Um, this is all by um, the understanding that this prayer life really is centered on that reality of faith, right? That we're trusting in the Father, and we're always going to him in prayer, because it is his name in which we live under, right? If, if we live under our own names, um, hallowed be thy name means nothing to us. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Because we love our own name. Hallowed be thy name, right? Your name, God, not mine. I need your name to be hallowed in my life because I need your help. Help us to live holy lives um, according to your name. Right? Um, as we see in the notes on the first petition right here. <clears throat> If someone could read that for me, the notes, the note. God's name is certainly holy in itself, but we pray in this petition that it may be kept holy among us also. How is God's name kept holy? Uh, oh, is that what you want us to read? Oh, you're right next next to it. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. God's name is kept holy when... The word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as the children of God also lead holy lives according to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. But anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God among us. Protect us from this heavenly Father. All right, so anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word, teaches or lives, that is uh, uh, false teaching or we're living contrary to God's word, this is... Uh, where we are uh, disrespecting, dishonoring, uh, neglecting, profaning the name of God among us. Now again, when we talk about hallowed be thy name, uh, what is the name you talked about earlier, Jesus, right? Uh, fear not, Isaiah 43. Fear not, I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Right? So when we talk about name, I called you by name and you are mine. Uh, this is uh, a clear picture of, of uh, being connected to Christ by his grace. Just think about that. The name in which you live under. And that name is given to you by the grace of God. Right? His work upon the cross, his death and resurrection, of course the gospel but also when we talk about names what other place are we reminded of the name in which we are connected to how are we brought in what means have we been brought in by the holy spirit the holy spirit that has called us by his uh called us by the gospel enlightened us with his gifts you said that i remember i love that sheldon when you said that on facebook yeah, I come to church to receive the gifts. Yeah. Remember when you said that on Facebook? I don't and remember. I, I, don't. I, think, I think you did. And I, 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 it warmed my heart. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's so true because I'm not really a heart warmer. I'm not into that. 
It's okay, Pastor. <laughs> I'm just a cold stone heart. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, but no, no, no. But what are the gifts that he gives? It starts with a B. Ends with M. Baptism. Baptism. Good. <laughs> so we see baptism, that baptismal name that we were called into. Right? This is all by the power of the Holy Spirit that, that has called us into his grace. All by the gospel, but also by daily as we live in it, in our baptism, right? This is, this is so important to remember as we talk about the name. Because when you talk about how would be thy name, that means I'm covered and under his dominion. I'm under his kingdom, right? I, I've been brought in by his grace. His, he is the active doer of my salvation. And he has done it. And he has called me. My baptism, I didn't choose it. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that he has called me to faith to receive this gift of the water and the word. This is, this is the name in which we are reminded of when we pray this petition, the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. The name. And it's always good to question ourselves. How have I... How do I know that I'm under his name? Right? It's through that name that we have also the Lord's Supper. So, again... Uh, this is uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the name in which we live under. Remember, how did we get there? And right there, how thankful we are uh, uh, to know how we got there. Right? We're not the righteous Pharisee who says, I got there because of my name. No, we got there because of the name of Christ, who swooped down low and the word made flesh and, and the baptism, the water and the word, whether you look at Naaman in the river or, or Noah in the flood. Right or, or Moses in the Red Sea parting, and they're going by this passage of water, uh, so too is our baptism as uh, we were uh, buried, into, uh, buried in, in, into Christ. And this is, uh, uh, this is clearly the name in which we live under. So, very important to know that, because without his name, where would we be? Living in sin without regret. We'd be dead, even further. Right? Yeah. We'd be dead, eternally condemned without the name of name of Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? We would be eternally separated. No hope without the name of God coming to this world to die for our sins, right? This right. is, uh, this is uh, very important as we talk about the name. Uh, so it could read uh, paragraph 36 and 37 for me. Um, sure. Thank you. Um, this is indeed somewhat obscure and not expressed in good German, for in our mother tongue we would say, Heavenly Father... Help that by all means thy name may be holy. But what is it to pray that his name may be holy? Is it not holy already? Answer, yes, it is always holy in its nature, but in our use it is not holy. For God's name was given us when we became Christians and were baptized, so that we were called children of God and have sacraments by which he so incorporates us in himself that everything which is God's must serve for our use. Yeah, that's so great. I love that word, incorporates, right? Right, this, this corporate in body, right? How, well, Luther how... makes it really hard. to. He could easily simplify the way he speaks if he chose to, just so you know. When you meet him again, you should tell him that. I will. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you make me laugh. So, uh... The name incorporates uh, all by the word and sacrament. This is the name in which we have been grafted into, right? Uh, is the name of God holy in itself? Of course, right? But in our use, it is not holy, right? We, we know what we've been lived, uh, we know what name we have been under, but yet we don't use it uh, perfectly, right? We disrespect, we neglect, we, we forsake, we, we ignore all this stuff. Uh, definitely, uh, we can definitely um, uh, not use it um, uh, with holiness. So uh, d basically here with the petition, uh, we're really saying help us to live holy lives in your name through our living. Especially through the word. Right? Very important. Uh, okay, uh, why don't we turn, um, I believe we turned to this in the morning. Yeah, Romans 8, 16 to 17. Romans 8, uh, <clears throat> 16 to 17. 
someone could read that for me. If you get it before me, Jeff, go ahead. Okay. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Sorry, my re- writings really don't even know, what does, what does that even say, right? It says heirs, of course, right? <laughs> so we are, we are heirs of God by his name, right? Um, as it says on your handout, as heirs of God, why is this petition important to the faithful? Because we only can live in his name. Um, we live in his name because of his grace that has been given to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the word, uh, we have been... Uh, reconciled to God by that faith in Christ Jesus, uh, uh, oneness incorporated with God as children of God, as heirs. So that name, above all names, is very important when we talk about hallowed be thy name. I'm living under your name, and I have life because of your name. And not only do I have life in your name, but I'm an heir to your kingdom. I am adopted into your kingdom. I have sonship uh, uh, with uh, as a child of God, and I have a citizen. Uh, I am a citizen in the heaven. I have a seat um, in his kingdom um, as we uh, celebrated on Sunday, Ascension Day. Right? Ascension Day, yes. <laughs> About uh, ascending to the right hand of God and knowing that we are there with him also. Right? That he has prepared a place for us, and therefore we are heirs all by the name. Very, very comforting, I would say. Um, and this is, a name that we, this is the name that we have been given. Uh, why don't we continue? We're spoiled by that, by the way. Because it says right here, if indeed we share his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And we're actually really blessed that we're not suffering. Uh, well, you know, it, it depends. You not know. that it may not come, but I'm saying right now, we aren't suffering. Uh, uh <laughs> sorry. Well, we, I'm not. We, suffering is okay. No, I know. But I do mean, you feel like you're suffering for Christ right now? Well, uh, I think there's. It, de- it tends on. It, it depends on what you think of suffering as. But uh, people do um, endure. Um, in let's say you're older and you're you're uh, enduring in your body. Uh, let's say you're suffering with with struggles of this life. Uh, attacks of the devil of various kinds, uh, which is real. Um, um, you can think of suffering as in other countries where they're being persecuted for their faith, right? Right. Uh, but there is, there is suffering there um, as we live in the weakness of the flesh um, in, in, in certain ways as we, as we live our lives, and it depends on the person. But there is suffering, but yet in that suffering, what do we do? We, are, uh, we may also be glorified with him. That is, in our suffering, there is Christ's suffering, Right. And when Christ suffered on the cross, by his name, death and resurrection, we too uh, are connected to that name, knowing that we rise to the newness of life in our baptism, and uh, there we too are glorified in him, knowing that even suffering as a Christian, uh, there the Lord exalts us uh, by his promises. This is, uh, this is um, when we talk about the name in which we live, so important to know, hallowed be thy name. And we'll talk about this uh, a threaded diagram that I always like to put that is going on in my heart and mind when I pray this prayer. But uh, why don't we continue here? 39, so we could read that. 39. But how does it become holy among us? Answer as plainly as it can be said, when both our doctrine and life are godly and Christian, for since in this prayer we call God our Father, it is our duty always to act and, on, and behave ourselves as godly children that he may not receive shame, but honor and praise from us. All right, so how does, this, uh, how does it become holy among us? Answer as plainly as it can be said, when both our doctrine and life are godly and children. Now, now when we talk about doctrine, uh, what, is, what is that word, doctrine? What is... Do people like the word doctrine? What does it connotate sometimes? Doctrine, Mike. To doctor somebody? Sometimes doctrine is um, 
It's a very kind of like, oh, you're going to get that old book in the attic and you're going <laughs> to show us what uh, has been said in, in long times past or that's so not relevant anymore and doctrine that's so, uh, so, uh, so to the book and, oh man, that's just too much. You know, doctrine uh, can be seen in so many negative ways, but uh, for us, doctrine is everything because it points us to the Word of God, which is our life, right? Uh, the, the Word of God... Um, is where uh, where we pray to God, help us in your word, right? To live uh, when both our doctrine and life are godly and Christian, right? What happens when the word and I just talked to our confer, confer man about this, he's being confirmed on Sunday, but what's the difference between uh, the Bible is the word versus the Bible contains the word. What is the difference right there? What's the difference, you think? I think... Between contains and is. I think contains would be the gospel, which are words spread out of Christ's mouth. And then the Bible is the word because God himself allowed these chapters to be in the Bible. All right, uh, good, uh, good try at that. Uh, <laughs> no, that's, <why. laughs> that's okay, man. That's why I'm here. No, Bible is, right? All Scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is God breathed, right? Like, when we talk about uh, 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 the Holy, uh, the uh, Lord's Supper, right? Jesus says, take and eat. This is, right? This is my body. There's no way around that. That this is the Word of God. Uh, when someone says the Bible contains the Word of God, what they're saying is, yeah, some of it's... I don't know why I'm like, ready to go into the jump rope. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. The, shh, shh, yeah. Shh, and you're like... Anyway, sorry, sorry. But the, the Bible containing the Word of God, they're saying is, yeah, we believe that the Bible is true, but maybe some of it is not really the Word of God. Oh, I see. Does that make sense? Sure. And we see this in Christianity today. Then people can say, oh, that's, well, that's not really God's that. word. We can take that out. What happens when that happens? Pe- people can say, oh, that's not really God's word. I'm going to just omit that part. And then what do they do next? Make their own things up. And then what happens, what happens to the word of God? <laughs> it's not there anymore. No. And what can they stand on if it only contains rather than is? They stand on themselves. And how far can we get with our own name, Sheldon? Nowhere. Nowhere, right? So when we talk about doctrine and the word, why we are so, uh, people say, uh, strict, right? It's not that we're strict. It's that this is where our life is, right? The word of God. There is no place. Uh, we say it, hallowed be thy name. That name is uh, holy among us when doctrine and, and life are godly and Christian. Right? When we compromise that, that's when we, um, well, uh, that's when it goes. Right? That's, when our, uh, that's the way in which we go, well, uh, we profane the name of God and we go on our own way. So this is a, a very important thing as Christians in this day and age, especially, right? In this current state that we're living in, not California, but status, I, I say, in this current contemporary time where, uh, where the objective truth of God's word is constantly being attacked, right? And, um, and no one wants to hear that the Bible is the word of God. That's what the world says. But we as Christians know that this is indeed the word of God. And right here, as we see it, it is our duty to act and behave ourselves as godly children that he may not receive shame, but honor and praise from us. Um, okay, so uh, paragraph uh, paragraph 40, if someone could read that. Now the name of God is profaned by us either in words or in works. In the first place, then it is profaned when men preach, teach, and speak in the name of God what is false and misleading, so that his name must serve to adorn and to find a market for falsehood. That is indeed the greatest profanation 
and dishonor of the divine name. Furthermore, also when men, by swearing, cursing, conjuring, etc., grossly abuse the holy name as a cloak for their shame. In the second place, also by an opening, an, an openly wicked life and works where those who are called Christians and the people of God are adulterers, drunkards, misusers, envious, and slanders. Very good. So right here, when we talk about dishonoring God's name or profaning his name, what happens here? Uh, we see that the word of God is preached falsely. What, what, if we, what if we listen to false teaching? What happens? Is that good for us or bad for us? It's very bad. Well, I guess in one sense, if you just like listen to a lot of sermons and you try to dissect things just for fun, that's one thing. But if you're, if we're being, <laughs> uh, if we're being led, uh, if we're being led by these false teachings, uh, it's leading us down the wrong path, right? And we have to flee. We have to flee. Got to go, right? And and this is a, uh, uh, this is very important. But secondly, to live an openly and wicked life when we're profaning the name of God, uh. Yeah, I, we not only speak falsely in God's name, but uh, we also live openly wicked in our conduct. And we see the drunkards, the misers, the, the envious, and the slanders. And this is, uh, uh, when we look at our handout here, uh, what are some ways we do not hollow God's name? Um, and my answer would be, uh, we are, again, we are imitators of Christ, right? We're called to serve and love in his name, in thought, word, and deed, but uh, but we do not God we do not hollow God's name again uh, when we are teaching falsely or living an openly wicked life. Right. Um, say, help us, O oh Lord, to live a holy life. Help us, O oh Lord, to be led by Your Word, uh, to live according to Your name, not my name, but Your name. Right. Uh, Okay, we are we are running along here. Very good. So, uh, actually, not really. We're taking a while. <laughs> Sorry, we got through the second petition all throughout the second, first class. So we got to we got to speed this little autobahn up. So, uh, what connection does the first petition and second commandment have with each other? So that uh, first petition is, "Hallowed be thy name." Second commandment is, "Do not misuse the name by swearing or of the Lord your God." Right. So, what is the connector from the first petition and the second commandment? It is the name. Right? We're always hallowing the name of God. That is, uh, again, um, his word and his life uh, leading us in a sense of um, his name that c continues to guide and cover us um, and to um, help us to live in, uh, to live in his um, in his grace. So this is a, uh, when we talk about uh, first petition and second commandment, they pretty much go hand in hand. Um, because uh, when we misuse the name of the Lord your God, what do we do? Uh, we use his name carelessly, carelessly. We, we, uh, we use his name in vain, right? You might say, I like that. Okay, do not use the Lord's name in vain. And you know why I think the Lord commanded that? Because the Lord's always with us and, and present with us, and we use His name, we grab His attention immediately. If you're using it in vain, you're attracting His attention for nothing. Uh, in other words, let's say I'm the guy, I'm not, but say that I'm the guy at work that something bad happens, I see. I use the Lord's name. Instantly, I got the Lord's attention for nothing because it was just because of, I used His for swearing purposes, and you know what I mean? Sure, okay. sure, sure. Um, yeah, you know, that's, we're called to honor his name, right? Right. To revere his name, to to praise his name, not to use his name as a... Yeah, because typically when, when people stuff cry out... and say, uh, what do people do when they... I usually just sit down and ride in pain and cry. Like, <laughs> in Pastor, the if you're climbing a mountain and, and all you slip and you're hanging on and you cry out to the Lord... The Lord's going to be there, right there, listening. And, and if you smack your hand with a hammer at the house and use the Lord's name, 
He's going to be there right there too, and he's going to go. <laughs> see the job defense. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I see it. I mean, he's probably tired of it. So he said, you know what? Don't use my name in vain. That's why, again, we have these. His name is above all names, and we, we know what that name is in a sense of what he has not only created this world, that he has redeemed us and to call us into the one true faith, that his name, without his name, where would we be? So, therefore, you know, we are called to, to not misuse his name. But also, when we misuse his name, uh, we will live an openly wicked life. And, and as we talk about uh, fortune tellers and tarot card readers and psychics, astro uh, astrological signs, all these things are ways in which we forget the name which we live under, and we live under these other, other names, hoping that they will guide us. So, it's... It's very important to know that when we say hallowed be thy name, and we'll talk about this now, and I want to um, bring up my diagram here about this weaving prayer, right? This is why the Lord's Prayer is so, it's so, uh, it's so great, because when we see this, uh, So as we pray this prayer, you know, I don't, you know, do you ever do that, go all capitals and then change your mind in the middle mm -hmm. and go lowercase? Sure. I don't know what that means. But anyways, uh, hallowed be thy name. We look at that weave and, and quickly we say, uh, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. We say it at church right on Sunday together. But as we go through this, uh, a really good way of dwelling on this Lord's Prayer is to really dig deep in a sense of, understanding what this means. Does that make sense? In this linear prayer right here, here we have the, the deep meaning of what this really means, and I want you to kind of pray upon that. So when we talk about uh, hallowed be thy name, what did we talk about earlier? What name do I live under? And that is the name of Christ. What is that name of Christ? It's his grace that... That is, uh, uh, come to this world to die for my sins. It is the name of my baptism, of course. I won't talk about the gospel. I should write gospel there. And baptism. There I am covered by his name. And we praise the Lord knowing that, thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, bringing me into the fold, uh, for calling me to faith, for believing that Jesus is the Christ, uh, but also to bring me in my baptism. Thank you for that name. Right. Also, you could pray on this theme of, Lord, I... Uh, I've fallen short to my own name. Uh, please uh, forgive me. I need your name to exalt me, your name to lead me, to help me to live this holy life. Right? Uh, may, my, uh, uh, may the word be the truth, not containing the truth, but is the truth in my life. Right? May you help me lead a godly life, holy and godly life, according to your, right? your name. And so this is all that is going on here. There's so much more, right? Uh, and this is what, as we pray it, um, this is a further understanding of what this means. So you're not just saying, hallowed be the name of the kingdom come that will be done on earth as is in heaven, but you're really saying, hallowed be thy name. And as you're praying that, uh, really dwell upon what this means. And um, how, how much of a, so we talked about Luther saying it's a Christian weapon. Um, how important of a defense this is um, because it, it really gets us back to who we are in his name and it humbles us doesn't it because uh, the reality is that I don't deserve to be in his name I think God's trying to tell us he doesn't want us to use his name in vain he doesn't want us to misuse his name if it's the name above all names he doesn't want us why would you, you wouldn't want to misuse it you know especially yeah. if you stub your toe you know, even if your nail cracks. Yeah, <sighs> that's right. That's right. You know, I got this guy at work, and, and he doesn't swear. He's a Christian. He's a Christian. He, he, but he, instead of using the F word, he'll say "mother flower," and I'll look at him and go, "Dude, really, really? Mm -hmm. you, you even have to go there?" You know, that's just cursing. We just talked about it. It's. it's uh, Swearing, cursing, conjuring, it's right there. Well, I know some people would say that uh, saying bad words is... Uh, but I think with misusing the name of the Lord, uh, that's uh, under a different realm of things. We're, we're talking about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's... Uh, I think when we talk about the name again, this is a reminder of 
uh, not only how we became holy, but that we're saying, Lord, help me to lead a life according to your name. The name that I've been baptized in, the name that I've been washed clean with by the body and blood of Jesus, the name that gives me the strength to meet the days ahead, to live according to the word of truth. So when we, talk, when we talk about swearing, we're not used, we're not talking about the F word here. We're talking about the Lord's name. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So it's, I think it's very important to know this, right? Yeah. Because it gets us back to, I'm not living under my own name. I'm living, I'm living under the name of Christ. Yeah. I'm, I'm living under the name of God who has given me this gift. And this is my life, to hallow his name. Lord, help me to do this uh, and help me to lead a, a holy life according to your grace, according to your name. I need your help because I can't do this. I'm not that Pharisee who says, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this. I'm that tax collector who's on his knees saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, right? This is why that name is so important because my name uh, should... Might as well just read, hello, my name is a sinner, right? Hello, I am a sinner. My name is a sinner. My, hello, I am a sinner, and I need Christ. And this is where uh, we get back to what it means to be exalted by the name of Christ and what he has done. And so, What a great gift this is in this petition. Uh, because again, through the chaotic life that we might live, through the busyness that you might face, you get back to this prayer and you say, hallowed be thy name. And it really gets you back to who you are. And that is so important in the life of faith. Because the devil will never stop. Always attack every angle, every curveball, slider, splitter, <laughs> fastball riser, you know, curveball, everything it'll do to strike you out, right? Everything. I love baseball, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the Lord will, uh, the, the devil will do anything he'll do, anything it'll take to, 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 uh, uh, to tear you away from that name. And this is where we pray, getting back to who we are in this word of truth. And in this life that he has called us to live, um, all by his grace. So this is um, a very key, they're all key, actually. But this is a, a start to all the important prayers that we have <clears throat> in this prayer that the Lord has given to us. Any thoughts on this? No, I got it. I, 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 I realize <laughs> Iron Maiden obviously doesn't have it, because they wrote a song called Hallowed Be Thy Name, and... And in the lyrics there, it says, uh, if there's a God, why does it let me go? And then he cries, hallowed be thy name. So the guy's confused completely. As we conclude here, um, in paragraph 47, if someone could read that, paragraph 47. Um, here now learn how great need there is of such prayer. For because we see how full the world is of sects and false teachers who all wear the holy name as a cover and sham for their doctrines of devils, we ought to by all means to pray without ceasing and to cry and call upon God and against all such as preach and believe falsely in whatever opposes and persecutes our gospel and pure doctrine and would suppress it as bishops, tyrants, enthusiasts, etc. Likewise, also for our, ourselves who have the word of God but are not thankful for it, nor live as we ought according to the same. I think that last part really hits home in the sense of uh, for those who have the word of God but are not thankful for it, nor live as we ought according to the same. And this is, uh, I don't know about you, but it's easy to be not thankful for it, right? To be complacent, apathetic, lazy, uh, just you know, not really honoring that word, and, and so easy can we fall to that too. None of us are immune, that's for sure. And uh, we clearly see we need his help, right? We need to uh, pray that name, remember what name we're under, and to live according to that name, that name, that name, right? Not my name, but his name, right? This is uh, uh, so important in, in this prayer life. Thanks for listening to this Bible study presentation from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.